Proverbs 17, 22, again, a joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. What crushes your spirit? What crushes your spirit? A country that seems to be falling apart? Relationship stress? Children? Going off the rails, maybe? Inflation and other financial woes? Fear of the future? What crushes your spirit? Stress is super unhealthy. I don't even have to provide statistical proof as we all know it. But we have in this verse is a picture, a picture of what happens when a body ages. As, as you age, your body may reabsorb calcium and phosphate from your bones instead of keeping these minerals in your bones. This makes your bones weaker. And when this process reaches a, a certain stage, it's called osteoporosis. The bones become brittle and either we start taking supplements or risk having breakage. A crushed spirit has a way of aging you prematurely and making you brittle. So Jesus, as we know, helps with our crushed spirit. When we face that, the Apostle Paul, who wrote a fair share of the New Testament, is extraordinary in how durable his joy was when things weren't going well. In 2 Corinthians 7, verse 4, he writes, I am overflowing with joy in all our affliction. Colossians, he says, now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake. Where does all this come from? You know, I ran across some observations relative to the question of where joy comes from. Where does the joy come from that alleviates a crushed spirit? Where does the joy come from that alleviates a, a crushed spirit? First of all, it was taught by Jesus. Blessed are you when men hate you. Be glad in that day and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. Troubles for Jesus compound your interest in heaven, which lasts, of course, a lot longer than on earth, than our life here. Second, it comes from the Holy Spirit. It comes from the Holy Spirit. What, and again, where does the joy come from that alleviates a crushed spirit? It comes from the Holy Spirit, not our own efforts or imagination or family upbringing. The fruit of the Spirit is joy. Third, it comes from belonging to the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, Romans says, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Fourthly, it comes through faith, that is from believing God. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing Again, Romans tells us that. Fifthly, it comes from seeing and knowing Jesus as Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always. Philippians 4. And then sixth, it comes from fellow believers who work hard to help us focus on these sources of joy. And we need each other for this. Rather than having a brother or sister in Christ fall victim to deceitful circumstances. We, we help each other focus on the source of joy. We are workers with you for your joy, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 1. And so an event like today when we're together or any other time, you know, great opportunities to increase one another's joy. And it means helping each other focus on our great hope. And our great hope is in a person. It's in Jesus. 
Finally, James chapter 1 says, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect result, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. So it was Jesus who brought joy into the world in some very practical ways. Our, so, our source of joy is Jesus. And when you think about how much joy he brought into the world, just think, think about like every time he healed a person, you know, every time he cast out a demon or forgave a sin, joy was the immediate result. Those who recognized Jesus as the promised Savior and Redeemer of the world were filled with joy. And when the gospel spread in the days of the early church, joy followed that message. And humanity does yearn. Humanity yearns for hope for meaning, for purpose. And within every human heart is the knowledge of eternity, even if we don't recognize it as such. Without the true God, the creator, the, at the very core of our existence, only emptiness and futility remain. The world was lost, lost in darkness before Jesus came, came the first time. And, and the period between the end of the Old Testament and the beginning of the new, 400 years between Malachi and Matthew. God did not speak through his prophets for over 400 years. The period set up, set the stage for the greatest event of all time. God would become a man and live among us. It is a scandalous, amazing truth. It was like during the, those four centuries, God the Father saying, wait for it, wait for it. Except it was wait for him. And when the angel announced the birth of Jesus to the shepherds in the field, his first words were, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. And that great joy was the truth that the God who had seemed far off had come to them in human flesh. He was to be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. And those who saw him saw the face of God. He had come to rescue, to save, to heal, and to make mankind right with God. That was cause for great joy. It still is. Did you hear the amen over there? <laughs> because Jesus came, sinful human beings have an opportunity to come into the presence of a holy God and to be pronounced not guilty. When Jesus died on the cross, the veil of the temple was torn in two symbolizing that the wall of separation between God and man had been eliminated. And from then on, all who placed their trust in Christ would be forgiven of their sin and inherit eternal life. And when Jesus rose from the dead, he conquered death for every person who trusts in him. That is cause for great joy. You need him to be your savior, your forgiver, your joy giver. And so Jesus ascended back into heaven to prepare a place for all those who follow him. But he promised that he will come again a second time to establish his kingdom on earth. And in this kingdom, righteousness and justice will reign and God's people will have places of honor. The troubles of this life are not the end. Jesus told his followers, take heart, I have overcome the world. The knowledge that soon we will live and reign forever with our Lord is cause for great joy. The popular Christmas song, Joy to the World by Isaac Watts, celebrates 
the joyful occasion of the Lord's coming. But the lyrics were never intended to be a Christmas song. They were a poem by Isaac Watts based on Psalm 98, which is a psalm of the second coming of the Lord who comes to judge the earth. Jesus brought joy to the world in his first coming to earth as a baby, and he will bring joy to the world when he comes again to reign as King of kings and Lord of lords. So although our earthly life may be filled with troubles, we have reason for hope because Jesus came the first time and is poised to come the second time. We can sing with conviction, joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Will you receive King Jesus this morning? We need to remember that we were created. We're not an accident. And as created beings, the creator has every right to require of us righteousness and yet we don't have this righteousness the bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of god the bible says the wages of sin is death spiritual separation from him for eternity but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. The scripture describes God as holy, not allowing sin into his presence. And therefore we need to be forgiven to spend eternity with him. And so as John chapter three, verse 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If that message interests you, I would like for you to after maybe sometime during the day after the service or while we eat or while the after the music or whatever just say something to me i would love to sit down and um show what the bible says about knowing god our creator it's a wonderful adventure of knowing him and walking with him and the joy of having your sin forgiven, can you think of a greater joy than that? Just to have your sin and your past, whatever it may be, forgiven. The fact that God our Father through the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ forgives our sin past, present, and future because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. What a great joy that is. And I hope today that we get many opportunities to be joyful, to laugh, to enjoy one another. I'm thinking too that you may wanna move your chairs a little bit this way move them east because right in back of Tony is the sun. Of course, Tony's got one of those tans that everybody is jealous of. So, um, James, let's come up and we're going to sing Isaac Watts uh, poem. Okay, some people may say, Lori was saying, is this Christmas in July? Remember, Joy to the World, not necessarily written for Christmas, but let's sing it together.